The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Okay, so Doctor, uh, now I'd like to go and uh, basically would like to investigate the parents learn more about the parents of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abdullah Alayhi Salam and Amina um, Inshallah if you can give me a bit of um, a, a brief maybe um, historical account of uh, their existence Inshallah Inshallah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa alayhi tayyibin al-Tahirin al-Ma'asumin um, if we want to talk about um, the parents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa who are Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim and on the mother's side is Amin ibn Tawahib. Um When we talk about Abdullah, we need to talk about Abdul Muttalib, we need to talk about Abu Talib, we need to talk about Hashim. Um, there were there were very difficult times during the times of, uh, if you like, the three generations. Um, Hashim was trying to help, providing services, uh, be helpful to the people of their piety mm. um, and they say historians say that he um, um, was on a trip and um, he died they say in Gaza um, some scholars say his death is suspicious he probably didn't die a natural death and which would have made sense because a lot of people claim, oh, he, he just passed away. And, and any, any human being who's going to pose the same question, how can a, a young man just pass away? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, sometimes people do die, but in, in this case, <clears throat> it was known that the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, uh, they, those who were in the know, they knew that the final prophet is coming. And so okay, on. they, if you like, there are reports in some way they had an, a program, an agenda to eliminate, to try to nip him in the bud, hmm. uh, try to eliminate him for him. And um, apparently, they could see telltale sign in the face in the individual. Um, <clears throat> so the nur was, if you obvious. like, yes, uh, there was nur and some of that. They <clears throat> so. Uh, According to some scholars, they say uh, it could be that um, he was assassinated and he, was, he didn't die a natural death, this Hashim. Um, but of course, uh, the important thing is that, okay, he's assassinated. If, if he were uh, assassinated, it came after this Noor has transferred to Abu Talib, uh, sorry, to Abdul Muttalib. Um, and um, Again, Abdul Muttalib, uh, um, he has his son, uh, uh, of course, they were, they were uh, as we mentioned earlier, Abdul Muttalib was Hujja, and his wasi, or his successor, his appointed successor by Abdul Muttalib was uh, his brother Abu Talib, alayhim salam and he had uh, his son Abdullah, and... Um, 
again Abdullah was a target. Um, there are various reports that um, he was both um, noticed and he, had, he, he, he attracted the notice of, if you like, the, the enemy. The attention of the enemies, uh, yeah. The attention of the enemies. And they tried on various occasions to try to eliminate him. On one of the occasions it says that uh, Wahab, uh, so they, they were on a, on a hunting expedition and, uh, and uh, the enemies, if you like, saw it, this was a good opportunity to uh, uh, have him assassinated, this uh, Abdullah. And he, um, he, so he noticed that the, these people were coming, mm. going to sort of launch an attack. And so he went forward to help, but he was at a distance. He went to help, but he noticed, it is said in the reports, that... Um, men or angels came from the sky and sort of repelled them and those people who were planning to attack Abdullah. Um, so um, so there were there were these things as well. Uh, this was Abdullah who was the uh, uh, the son of Abdul Muttalib. He it was at that stage according to that report when Wahab saw that he realized that there is something significant about Abdullah and um, so he went to Abdul Muttalib and he said, I want to marry my daughter to him, which of course <coughs> they agreed and so on. So Amina was. And of course, Wahab was, he had his own uh, social standing and out of piety. And, Do we and have any information regarding his, what did, his livelihood, for example? What did Abdullah uh, السلام, do for a living? Uh, probably um, what they did for a living was. Uh, <coughs> Like the others, either trade or being a shepherd mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, to uh, for for various cattle and so on, or going on a trip um, uh, either to Sham or to Yemen during the summer and winter. During the the winter, they went to Yemen. During the summer, they went to Sham uh, uh, for business. You know. To, either sell goods or buy goods and bring them to Mecca and so on. So this is the normal thing that they did, the usual thing that they did in there. Um, <clears throat> as we know, again, he, Abdullah, he married uh, Amina bin Wahab, and um, at the age of 25, he was, he died again. Um, again, some scholars say under suspicious circumstances, but of course, at that by that time, he um, so both Hashim and Abdullah yes died similar age. Um, I can't recall the age of Hashim okay. at the moment, but Abdullah died at the age of twenty-five. Um, but uh, and uh, his wife was pregnant with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa when he died, <coughs> when Abdullah died, and of course Abdul Muttalib uh, was the if you, if you like the next of kin, the one who cared for uh, uh, the Prophet when he was born and when so he Abdul was... Abdul Muttalib uh, took, an, um, took under his um, protection and guardianship Rasulullah Rasulullah and Amin, like yes. uh, Abu Talib did later on. Yes, so <coughs> up to the age of six years old, when the Prophet was six years old, Abdul, uh, Abdul Muttalib was in charge when at that stage Abdul Muttalib died <clears throat> and of course, he had he paid even though Abdul Muttalib had many sons, mm -hmm. um, he paid particular attention to him, and he, he he used to say that this boy will be the prophet of this nation, and prophet. So he humanity. warned the people. He he did, yeah, oh, yes. I mean, not as a public statement, but sort of to, within to, within to the, the family. Within the family. If so Abu Lahab did know knew that. Not, knew that. Yes. Yes. So Abu from Lahab. back then, you could uh, you could say that he rejected his prophethood. Well, we don't know back then what, what okay. was his stance, but uh, Abu Talib, Abdul, sorry, Abdul Muttalib used to say, you know, this, this boy will be the prophet of this nation. So at the age of, when the prophet was six years old, Abdul Muttalib dies, his, uh, the wasi of Abdul Muttalib, Abu Talib, alayhi salam, he takes over, he will, be, he will take, take care of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and <clears throat> if you like, 
the, the occasion when Abdul Abu Talib was going to a trip to Syria, to Sham, uh, uh, he wanted to leave Abu Talib, um, if you like, with the rest of the family, but he wanted to leave, sorry, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet was so attached to Abu Talib that uh, he said, how can you leave me alone? And he felt sorry. So he took uh, the Prophet with him. At that stage, he, the Prophet was 12 years old, according to reports. Mm -hmm. So this, briefly, this is the, if you like, about the parents of uh, the Prophet. So the, pro the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he was orphaned. His father died when he was in, in the womb of his mother. Mm. And so what about uh, Amina? He, 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 he lost his mother at the age of eight, when he was... Eight sorry, years old. Sorry? How old? Eight, you said. He is uh, six years old. Six. Yeah. And two years later, he loses... Uh, Abdul Muttalib dies, his grandfather. Mm. So his uncle takes over. And, um, and basically, his uncle, being the wasi, he knew what um, the Prophet, what this young Muhammad will be, um, being the wasi of uh, the Abdul Muttalib as well which he had received all the, um, if you like, knowledge and uh, the inheritance from Abdul Muttalib and he passed it on to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam later on. Um, so he, as I said, he was the wasi of the Ab of Abdul Muttalib and he, therefore, they were on the religion of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam and um, very much believer of, of, um, in, in the mission and the, in the religion of the Prophet even though the enemies still insist until today that he was uh, a, a non-believer or disbeliever, he was kafir, which of course far from it. Um, he was a devout, uh, faithful, mu'min uh, and believer in the Prophet and his, in his mission and very much one of the strongest uh, supporters and protectors of the Prophet and his uh, and his mission. About uh, the f the mother of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu mm. Alaihi Amina bint Wahab. No. Can you give me some information regarding um, her her tribe? Where she originated from? Is she related to Bani Hashem in any way? Um, Higher up in the ancestry, um, they are um, she, they come across in their ancestry Abd Manaf, who is the father of Hashim. Abd Manaf. Okay. Okay. So, if you like, they are the descendants of uh, Abd Manaf. Okay. And if you like, they are the cousins of Hashim. Higher up mm. in, the, in, in the in the ancestry. So, if you like, and they are from the same. Tr uh, if you like, Quraysh. Um, so, in that way, there are some sort of relationship, if you like. Uh, I feel like very much okay. d distant cousins like. Um, but again, Wahab was, uh, uh, had a, an important standing, social standing in, in, in the society, uh, mainly stands on his, on his piety and of course on his, the fact that he was on the uh, religion of Ibrahim, mm -hmm. uh, he was monotheistic and not uh, idol worshipper. And um, so specifically we have that, um, the, the mother and father of the Prophet, the Prophet says, were Muslimin, mm. were Muslimin. Mm. Um, we specifically have that su such hadith. And um, <clears throat> he used to pray for them. And there is uh, a narration where he prays for them, even though um, uh, the mother and father, they're not buried in, in Mecca, <clears throat> but he was in, uh, in Mecca when he prayed for them. Uh, it's a long story. And um, Allah instructed him how to pray for them and to call them. And they, if you like, they called back and said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Mm. But uh, anyway, so yes, they had uh, on both sides of the family, of the parents, they um, both the mother and father were Muslimin and their ancestors were uh, Muslimin. Uh, believers and practicing the religion and the teaching, the Sharia of Ibrahim So from my understanding is it's crystal clear to you that obviously the parents of the Holy Prophet وسلم, were both following a monotheistic religion because a lot of people claim 
that the parents of the Holy Prophet were yeah, kafir. Yeah, were disbelievers. Disbelievers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the question that pops up in my mind is, what is the importance of having the parents of a prophet, or in this case, the seal of the prophets? Uh, having them being believers in a monotheistic religion does it matter would it make a difference if for example a prophet was born from a non-believing family what is the importance and what is the significance of having a family pure meaning that the 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 believers in the oneness of god they recognize allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the idea the concept of having prophets being born into a family of non-believers what what is the difference and how how is it not possible to work um, no one's saying it's not possible we are we're just in here expressing the facts or the uh, the statements made about the prophet the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says that um, my ancestors up to Adam <coughs> they were all Muslims they were all Tahir um, as far as we are concerned we need to make sure that we know the facts and um, we teach our friends and family and so on what the facts are. Given the fact that there is a lot of um, untruth or distorted information be being spread by the likes of Bani Umayyah and Muawiyah yeah. and so on. Muawiyah was his job to pay, mo pay peop uh, people money to fabricate hadiths. And these fabrications have, have reached us today to the extent that his uncle Abu Talib uh, becomes kafir. The parents of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, become kafir and so on. So they try to distort um, the hadith, they try to distort the, fa um, the historical facts and we just, the least thing we need to do is to put them right. The least thing we need to do is to dis disseminate the, the, uh, the factual truths and the, 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 the hadith which the Prophet, which came, reached us from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, about various aspects, various issues, one of them being the faith of his uh, uh, parents and the faith of his uncle Abu Talib This is our job. We, what we need to do is to make sure uh, at least to push back the disinformation, push back the um, untruths which has been fabricated and has descend, reached us unfortunately until today, push them back and present the truth as we have received them from Ahlul Bayt Or there were uh, uh, Jewish people and Jewish scholars in Medina because uh, it is said that they, they came here because they uh, were awaiting uh, for the final prophet, for the prophet of the end of the time. So they knew that there was going to be a prophet. The Jewish people in Medina were being harassed by the uh, disbelievers, uh, the unbelievers, the idol worshippers. And they used to say that when the final prophet comes, he will protect us and we will seek refuge with him. And you will not be able, you the idolaters, would not be able to uh, harass us and persecute us.